is my space hatch material walkthrough. Um, when I posted this online um, and on that station, I had quite a few messages um, asking if I was going to do tutorial. Um, this isn't so much a tutorial as I'm just going to walk through how I made this graph. Um, so as, as we're looking at it now, it, it doesn't look like much. Um, I broke it up due to the nature of the sort of the material and uh, the design of it. I was able, I could just break it up into chunks and work on them in their own individual graphs and compile them all at the end. So even though this doesn't look like much, I'll go through each piece one at a time um, and explain how I went about creating it. Um, I'm by no means saying that this process is the best way or anything like that. Um, this is just how I went about creating it. For Just for me as an experiment, I mean, if I was gonna do this in a production, I'd probably 3D model most of this. There's, there's, there's no real need to do this all as a um, procedural texture. Um, so. We'll start with the main chunk and we'll dive right in. So this is the first bit I started with on this material. It's the centerpiece of the materials, the hatch and the sort of surrounding structures. Um, so the first bit I looked at was this orange, um, the orange bit of the hatch. Uh, I always I wanted a rounded edge corner. I wanted to have a soft bevel on it, and the way I always create that is I start with a shape, um, give it a high quality blur. I hit the scram to sort of sharpen the edge off and then add a soft bevel on top. I didn't want anything, uh, I don't want like a hard edge to the bevel um, because I, you know, when you do sci-fi stuff they always tend to have a nice um, soft edge. Um, actually you'll be able to see a bit if I, if I enable tessellation and I hope this tessellation factor is I were to uh, 5, it was a nice amount of, uh, of scale for my um, Height map, and you can sort of start to see the details. So, after creating these sort of, when I was happy with the edge of the center hatch, I, I planned out these holes for the bolts. Um, again, created out using a tile sampler, and then I just this isn't really this technically isn't procedural because if you wanted to change the amount of holes, you'd probably have to go back and tweak these graphs. Um, it was the quick and quickest and easiest way to create what I wanted to create. Um, so I was just basically subtracting creating a pattern I wanted. I knew in my head what shapes were going to be on this hatch so I knew already I wanted to have a window um, I wanted to have this sort of locking mechanism um, so I already knew that in my head creating this and I had a, some good reference to work from um, so that's why early on it, it doesn't look like they're sort of it's right. Um, just blended them and subtracting it away. Um, I used a full subtract um, and then blend them back on top so basically when I was trying to subtract and I didn't want to subtract fully using a 0.5 um, I was getting artifacts and it, you know, it wasn't subtracting the way I wanted to so if I by doing a full subtract and then lay, overlaying it again using a flat colour I used add here um, it let me subtract and get the height I wanted but then control where the bolt would sit within that um, indent I then applied a blur, um, all the edges, you, when you uh, go straight from black to white or black to grey um, and you scale it, you get that horrible sort of breaking effect. So by blurring it, it just um, softens it a little bit and gets rid of that. Um, I got this bolt node, I think it's a substance share, it's just, it's a really good tool, uh, saves a ton of time, uh, really versatile, you can you know change how much chamfer is, how much rounded edge, what type of bolt. Um, so yeah, I really recommend picking this up because it just saves a ton of time. You could spend hours making a really nice bolt. Um, and this will, should cover anything you actually need um, when it comes to sort of bolts and designs of them. Use the same tile sampler and basically copied all these nodes and put them here and use them again just so that they all sat exactly where the holes are made from are. Um, and then I blended them on top and I had... When I was doing this, um, I got it looking right at this stage with a height blend, but when I started height blending everything together later on, I lost a lot of the detail. So later on, I had to come back and adjust the height blend, height blend um, and almost exaggerate it so that here it didn't look great, but once it was height blended at the end, it still read well and looked right. Um, so then we've got the rim with these dipped edges. Uh, again, start with the same same way I did the shape. I had the shape tool, blurred it, histogram scan, bevel, 
Um, I use the curve node a lot. Um, it's probably my favorite node right now. Um, it's really, really versatile. Um, so to create this indent, um, but with a rounded edge, I was able to just, you know, draw, add a pretty big bevel and then use the curve node to drop it in and then back up and give it that rounded edge there, but a slightly harsher edge here. Um, and then for the the raised bits, I had I tried a few different ways of doing this. Um, this ended up being the way I preferred, so I used a gradient, I used a curve node in order to flatten it out at the top, then have that drop. Um, tile sampler to get a tile across nicely, and then this actually is quite nice because if I wanted to have um, more of these in this shape, I can just up the tile sampler and it would increase the amount. Um, use transform to position it, mirror it, rotate, mirror it, and blend on top of each other. Um, high blend them together so that it's sat right. This look a bit thin, it still isn't perfect. You can see the edge there, but um, at a scale, you see this part of the asset, you, you, you don't notice. Um, and then we moved on to the this broad rim with the rivet holes in. Um, again, Use it. I, I use the pro. I should really make a node for this um, rather than keep using individual nodes. Um, something I might have to do soon because yeah, I use this a lot. So shape, blur, histogram, bevel. Um, the way I did this one as well is I had two of the same bevel, transform one of them and slightly shrunk it and subtracted it from each other. Um, this is just because when I was using the curve node, I was getting a slightly fatter corner than the actual edge. So it made sense to do it this way. Um, there's probably easier ways of doing that. Um, I probably made my life a bit difficult doing it this way, but it worked. Um, I then used a shape with the curve mapper node. I bought this um, off our station. I can't, the artist's uh, name doesn't come to mind, so I'll link it in the description. Um, but basically I use this to get a nice curve to follow the curve of the bevel. Um, again, probably not the easiest way of doing this and actually this is probably the bit that frustrated me the most and I'm still not happy with because I couldn't get the uh, rivets to line up nicely. Um, but similar to what I was doing before, tile sampler, transform, mirrors, um, basically got all the holes where I wanted them and then subtracted them from the main shape. I then height blend all of this together. Um, so these are the first two pieces. Um, I wanted the broader holes to be sort of in front higher than the um, the one with the lip, and then I height blended. So then I blurred it to soften it all up again, and then height blend with the main middle panel. Um, it took me quite a while to get to this stage. Um, after I got to here, the rest of it rolled off pretty smoothly. Um, this is the main bit I had. I, I wanted to get figured out and work out how I wanted to do it. So, after I got to this stage, um, the rest of it was pretty smooth. Um, so, what I did want to have is I didn't want much damage on these metallic bits. Um, I wanted to have a little bit of damage and wear on the actual hatch where people would be interacting with it and you know moving stuff in and out of. Um, so, I just used a really simple um, grunge map and a purling noise and a non directional warp. Um, blended a fractal sum on top to give a little bit of extra noise, inverted it and subtracted. It really weak subtract like 0 0.03. I didn't want anything too strong and even this is looking at here, it might be a bit too strong. Um, but it's it serves a purpose, it's giving a bit of information um, in that area. The next bit was, where did I get to? Right, so the next bit was adding these bolts either side of these little lips. Um, so the way I did that, used the bolt tool again, positioned them the same right distance to be you know the width of one of these um, lips. I used the same tile sampler I used to create these and the same nodes afterwards so they sit exactly where they should sit. Um, so that was quite a good time saver, copying all these pieces from, I believe it was this bit. So was these nodes and this tile sampler was used um, when creating this bit. Um, and then there's the broad bit, which is 
I wanted to have this final lip around the outside. Um, I didn't quite get the corners right. You can see it doesn't perfectly line up um, with the curve of the, the broad hold panel. Um, but it, it serves its purpose. I wanted to do it really sort of just to seal off our whole shape and uh, enclose it. So shape tool, blur, histogram scan. Um, it gave it quite a sharp bevel. reason for that was I needed quite a lot of bevel space in order to use the curve node to thin it out um, the way I wanted it to. Um, using auto levels, um, just to bring the ranges back because this was there wasn't much range from black to grey. So I used an auto levels just to bring it back out and positioned it with a transform node. Um, this was then blended in with everything else. So it's from here it's just it keeps building out and out from um, this is how I approached it just start with the main middle bit and just keep working out more and out more and out more um, so now we've got the this sort of plastic um, sort of frame to the, the shape this again I wanted to have a very distinct shape I wanted this really broad curve um, frame in it and then a sharp drop off so repeat myself again, it was the shape tool, blur, histogram, bevel, used the curve node, you can see it quite clearly there, the sort of shape I was going for, um, with a drop off in this graph you can see it quite clearly actually. Um, again, I didn't want the sharp edge to be too sharp so I uh, gave it a, so I auto levels it and I blur, at the end I blur it so that this edge isn't so sharp. Subtract. I wanted these chunks subtracted out for where the latches would sit and where the different pipe pieces would sit. Um, again, using shapes and tile samplers and transforms. Um, I used blur and histogram on this as well, just to round them off so they're not so harsh. Position them where I wanted to position them, and then subtracted them out. Um, this basically gives space for all the pipe pieces and the latches to sit comfortably, um, so it doesn't become too rigid as well. It just gives a bit of extra shape and form to the, the whole piece um, also with it being plastic this there should really be a tiny bit of grain so you can see it there I just use a fractal sum and um, whenever I want to add grain like this I really subtle noise which I don't want to have um, be too distracting I normally use a fractal sum um, it's just a really nice texture like it's super you know subtle detail but it just helps have some material definition between the the steel and the metal and the plastics. Um, so I blend that in. Um, next piece is the pipes. These were kind of weird um, because in my head I had a far more complex idea for the pipes, but in practice when actually putting this stuff together, um, it turns out that it just doesn't work like that. It it went out the size of them and the size that you see the 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 viewer will see it. You can't read any of the shapes I originally had. So again, I use a curve map pad to get that nice curve. Um, I use this quite a lot as well with the blend node, just cutting off edges. Well, I want sharp edges like that. So this has a lot, it's too long, has these tailing off bits. So plug it into a blend node and using the cropping area just to help trim it down to the size I wanted. Gave it a blur just to soften it out. Levels pass. And I also brought in these sort of like these were originally going to be like sort of bolt and weld they also have welding detail um but in practice putting it together it looked nice big but when i scaled it down and put it into place um it didn't come out at all the way i wanted it to so i ended up with these sort of just blocky lips which from a distance and they work they, they again they serve their purpose of um as like brackets um positioned it mirrored mirrored levels pass and it plugs back down Again, I, I high blend. There's a lot of high blend nodes. I, I use high blend a lot, um, bringing these materials together. Just offers a lot more control, um, and you can get when you use like uh, the normal blend nodes. Um, at this point, I gave it in auto levels. I was starting to because I was high blend a lot of stuff. I was getting not the full range that I wanted. So just at this point, I used an auto levels just to sort of give me more full range back. Um, the outer pipes, so the bit in between the cutouts, exact same, apart from no, cu no curve node, but it has the same lips. I came into the same issues of I couldn't have the wild in the way I wanted to have it. Um, so positioned it, mirrored it, high blended it in. So now we're starting. So this middle piece is almost done. Um, 
all I needed to do was add these nice cut out pieces just so I have room for everything else that needs to go in same for the latches um, I because this one was a bit more difficult I had to do this later after I'd already created a latch and positioned it in the top graph um, I came back and added these sort of cutouts once I knew the size and dimensions of my latches um, so that was a bit of back and forth so I had to leave them um, when I was originally making it come back to it um, so that's sort of the main structure now we've got this piece over here um, this is the gear in the corner that's sort of locking mechanism um, this was a lot of trial and error I had um, like different designs I wanted to do with this um, and in all honesty it probably didn't come out quite the way I wanted um, however I've still got some pretty nice I think what I've got there works for the scale that we see it at so circle splat, splat circular allow me to create this sort of fan shape use the shape cut it out of the middle and uh, sorry use this to cut out of a circle so we get now these elements here see how they're made um, I wanted to have little indents cut out so um, beveled it really strong and used a histogram scan just so I could only get the high ranges which then gave me these indents I can use same process to actually create the shapes just slightly different scales curve node to sort of modify my bevel so I've got this nice little gear shape here wanted some extra levels of detail so use splat circular um, to subtract just some extra little detail out same for the line details so now we've got like this random sort of gear shape there wasn't really anything intentional going on here it was more I just wanted to sort of have something there and um, that you'd imagine spinning or working um, when you unlock the door um, again simple shape circle with a bevel and a curve mode to give that little indent and use splat circular to sort of subtract some uh, details out um, same for these triangular pieces these triangular pieces were added to it to give like a lip where you can imagine something being extruded out of um, just see them there and I use a splat circular a lot on this piece in this particular section so we've got the first bits which are the blocks and then you've got the pipes which come out so we've got this sort of in, inner shape now we'll blend them together we've got this um, the middle originally had like a crazy like dial thing going on but again the size that the player that the viewer sees it it doesn't really work um, so that's why I ended up going with a bolt a really simple bolt big bold shape um, it just worked better from what I had before um, and then there's this transformer positioning and plugging into the sort of thing it sits in so what it sits in is this outer shape this was a bit more difficult to make there's a lot of trial and error position in it so first I had to sort of transform and tweak rounded uh, chamfered boxes to create the shape I wanted which is this bevel it curve so I could just get the outline and subtract it so from my main panel so now we've got yet this cut here and now to do the same process again and slightly tweak the scales to actually have so I'll go through it again bevel it I sorted the curves out so that um, it wasn't too high a range so when I high blended it um, it wasn't overpowering the original material too much so our scale blended it in so now we have the panel um, and then there's this sort of socket the whole thing sits in it's a lot of just blending shapes together again so around a, around a circle with a square beveled curves levels same for the circle I wanted that to have quite a similar feel to this plastic rim, that sort of uh, strong curve with a harsh drop off. So that's reflected with the um, when I do the subtraction. So we've got a curve bit, we blend them two together. I had to do um, quite a strong blur pass on the end of it, um, just so that these shapes actually blended together the way I wanted them to. Because um, beforehand that was a, like a really sharp transition and it looked like um, two separate pieces sort of clicked together whereas one is being like it had been casted as one piece um, so there's also taking a circle cutting out there's also the two sockets for the bolts you can see that in this 
graph the bolts probably stick out a bit too much but in situation with the rest of the material they blend back in nicely so this is what I mean when I had to push it to the extreme on some bits so the one I blended it later it came back together the way I wanted it to so it's high blending all these pieces together um, when I put the socket in so I had this originally this is how I sort of finished this piece this piece of the um, design it, it felt a bit vacant in there so I wanted to add this sort of mesh grid underneath um, really simple to do just a tile sampler which I inverted cut out the shape it's going to go in I blended it in so sat just at the right level and then it was a case of positioning it blending it in with the um, locking hatch I already cut out previously um, and then wanted to sort of have some not so much bolts more um, sort of areas where there's just something going on some information there's not necessarily they're not anything in particular it's more I just wanted to break that shape up a little bit then there's the panels this paneling um, these indents super simple to do this was um, just cutting a square up using another square subtracting away from each other getting the shape I wanted blurring it histogram scan uh, beveling it and then positioning to subtracting from the main shape so that's just like a really easy trick to get these nice inf nice indent panels and what was the last bit oh the window um, so the window is just to fill that space again same trick uh, cut apart a square using another another shape use the curve node to give me that indent um, look I wanted levels pass and plugged into the height and my height always goes into an invert um, and then into a normal mass my normal map and my ambient occlusion generator um, I'll go through the albedo and roughness when I do the I'll do all the albedo and roughness at one time all these maps as well um, all these graphs sorry I always have an output for a mask so that when I'm blending later I'm not having to create extra nodes to create my masks I'll do it in here and have an output for a mask so it's much cleaner um, on the other side so I'll move on to the next bit now so the next piece I worked on with this material was um, the side, the sort of bit that sits on the side of uh, the main hatch um, is a sort of a mechanical little latch with a cable and some bolts and like little what look like fuse boxes. Uh, these are lost. Everything else from like here on out is a lot quicker than the previous hatch. That main hatch middle piece was like the bulk of this work. Um, after that, everything else was pretty small little pieces. I was more like a jigsaw puzzle. Lots of transform nodes and shape tools. Uh, so I had a bolt I made. Um, it's just a circle with a, a, a shape subtracted from the middle with like a small bevel. Um, these were positioned, blend. I uh, position you know transform nodes, blend, position of one blend, levels pass. These. This is how with any of the bolts, this is always how I've positioned them. Um, again, I think this is the simplest way. Uh, could be proven wrong. These basically, these bolts I'm doing at the moment were to sit on this sort of panel which is holding the cable in place. So that was created with a gradient um, using a curve node to plot out the actual shape. So you can see that it has like stepping in it. Uh, I then used a shape tool, a shape node to sort of mask out the actual size of one of the uh, of the latch small blur like re whenever I use these blurs to soften everything out it's super super weak because I don't want it to be like become a soft rounded edge I just want to make them edges how they would if they were printed and used they would, they'd have that soft edge to them um, so I had these three bolts in a tri formed into a triangle using transform nodes and made sure that I rotate each one so it doesn't look like they're all completely uniform I blend them on top uh, did a histogram range. Uh, I wanted to change the ranges, um, so I wanted to sort of soft tighten up the ranges of this piece, and then mask it out again. Because beforehand this was too drastic; like the stepping was huge. So by using the histogram range to tighten up the ranges and then masking it out again, it just allowed me just to sort of soften that all out. Um, these go on to this main sort of block 
panel, which has uh, it's the same as what I've done before with other stuff, just shapes, which are polar noise and histogram, transform nodes, all positioned out uh, just to form this shape. The only bit which is different is this drop, which is a gradient uh, with a curve node uh, blended on top of it, just to give that nice drop off there. Um, but then it, again, using shapes just to cut out, cut these chunks out, shape what I want. These have use a high blend to bring the bolts into play. One, two, three. Um, going forward, the next piece is high blending that latch onto there. What these little prongs coming out there again? They're not really anything. They're just something to be interesting. Using a transform node on a polygon and a shape to cut out the sections I want in this shape, or oh, sorry, add to the sections, get this little end bit, blend a shape into it, position it, blend them together so I have multiple copies, add a small bevel, levels just so they're in the range I want them to be in, high blend them in so they look like they are underneath this panel, so they sort of tuck in underneath, they're like, I don't know, circuit breakers or something coming out. The next bit are uh, these. I, I don't know why I've always liked these sort of latches with bolts on. I think they just they. I don't know if it's because they're quite familiar to me. Like in day to day life, you see these types of. With all this sci fi stuff, you don't see a lot of these type of uh, plating and stuff very often. But these sort of plates with bolts, with a, which just to hold two pieces together, you do actually see quite a lot on a day to day basis. So I don't know why, if that's why I like it. Um, but anyway, that was created using a shape. I took a circle and just squashed it in. Um, and positioned it, blended it on top of the end just to give the end that again. I imagine in my head when I was doing this, I'm guessing there's an easier way of doing that particular process, but I just I'm not currently aware of it. Bolt transform blend it together so that I could lay them on top. Um, levels pass. I had this levels pass like this little node here wasn't there originally, uh, so I mirrored them together and blended them here. But I was having a lot of trouble blending them um, in a way that I wanted, uh, or getting the effect I was after. So it was, I had to use this levels node to just put it in the range which allowed it to, to blend in the way I wanted them to blend in. Because uh, I didn't want to height blend um, because I don't want them to come through the object to say I want them to sit on top so they actually bend to what's there already rather than um, actually just sort of merge through it. So that's why I use blend instead of a, a height blend there. Um, Creating a cable, this is where I think like a curve mapper is just so, it's just so powerful as a tool. Because you just create this little squiggly line, there's nothing special. And you can see, if I click there, you can see how plotted it is, a couple of you know, bends in it. Gave it a bevel, and then uh, I use screen. Again, I use screen, not add. Uh, I don't want it to add on top of what's there, I want it to still be influenced by the information underneath it. So, sorry, it's not the mic. Uh, I want it to be influenced by the information underneath it so that the wire is sitting on top of that and following it. So that's why I use screen. and Because usually with this type of stuff, I use add. Uh, this, I said, I end up using this box quite a lot um, in other surrounding areas. But again, it's I've just copied the nodes which are down there. So all these nodes are copied from previously. Um, so they're the latches. But it's a really simple little box uh, using a shape bevel curve this one was like i wanted a really broad curve on it and then i'll trim it down so that it's like it's got a broad curve but then a sharp edge use the cropping area i use of the blend node um, I, again as i mentioned previously i use that quite a lot it's a handy little tool um i then stretched it out i don't worry about just stretching it because the only information is horizontal there's no vertical information sorry there's only vertical information there's no horizontal information so I can stretch it, not worry about um, if anything gets distorted, because nothing, there's nothing to distort. Blurred it, just so we see, you can see why I do this blur. You've got like a harsh edge, it just allows that a little bit of drop off, so it isn't so jarring when you see it. Use a shape node with a small bevel, just to plug a little hole um, in this circuit breaker. Um, I'm, I'm calling it a circuit breaker, I don't actually know what it is, it's just a, a thing. Um, levels to pull in the range that I want. High blend these latches onto it, and then I do an auto levels to bring them all back into full range. Um, transform node and mirror so it sits either side. And 
that's this particular piece once again um the roughness and the albedo I'll, I'll go through um all at once so ambient occlusion normal um and that's this particular little bit i'll move on to the next one so this piece is the two bits which sit above and below the hatch um the vent and the light super this was pretty quick to make because i knew exactly what i wanted and i had some pieces i could reuse so the first bit's the light uh i saw with a gradient and i used a curve map just to tighten that gradient up um i mean pretty drastically and give that flat bit at the top and um, positioned it the way i wanted to gave it levels um, made a quick pill shape using two circles and a sh and a um, and a, a, a rectangle. Gave it a slight bevel so when I subtract it, it's got like a slight lip to it, and I've got my sort of main pill shape there. And then took what I subtracted and gave it a much harsher bevel to make it look round. I plugged that um, then on top, um, just as an add. Used a crop to just crop out some extra little bits the size and weren't quite right. Um, I then took some, I took a shape, gave it a bevel, a pretty you know, harsh bevel, positioned and mirrored it and I wanted to subtract it away from this shape just to give that a little lip there. Um, I also took the pill shape I made and histogram scanned and gave the positioning of it. And I'm using that as my emissive and when I take it into Marmon set to render, um, set that to orange and I've got like a nice orange pill light. Um, so that's, the, that's that piece, that's like a really quick simple piece, uh, positioned it. Um, I mirrored it so it's on the top and bottom uh, I took the circuit breaker box I made previously shortened it I turned it into a node at this point just because I wanted to clean up the graph a little bit and keep it small um, I positioned that either side of the light so now we have this sort of shape and then above all of it I wanted to have um, a vent of some sort so how did the vent was where is my vent? Here it is. So, uh, tile sampler with my grid. Positioned it. Subtracted it from a rounded shape. So now I've got my sort of vent already. Um, I also took a shape, beveled and curved now to give me like a really thin uh, stroke. If anyone knows like an easier way of doing this, it would be really appreciate. So in a moment, if I want to create like a stroke around my um, shape, I'm having to bevel it and use a curve and do it that way, which is which isn't ideal. So I subtract that from what's there, and now I have what is basically the vent. Um, I think, yeah, just blend it on top. I didn't have to really do anything special because because they're not overlapping each other. Just a simple blend uh, with like add. They're not interacting with each other, so it just goes on nicely. Um, mirror it, do a levels pass, plug it in, that's that little bit done. Um it's just above and below my my hatch. So this is the latch corners the, the corners I uh made. I really like this. This is probably one of the funnest bits I made in this material. Don't ask me why, it's super simple. I just it came out how I had it in my head. So Start with this shape, this is for this middle bit, and I uh, blurred another shape, histogram, positioned in the corners, and mirrored both ways. I subtracted from the original to give me these like nice little cuts in there. Um, I then took a gradient and a curve to the manipulate it, transformed it, and basically blended it on top to give me the sort of that drop off at the top of the latch. Um, that bit took me a very long time. Um, I, I don't know why, I just couldn't get it working the way I envisaged. I did the same again for a gradient and a curve. Transformed it and positioned it. And it gives me that sort of softer drop off at the bottom of the latch. So that's how I made this, sort of this main middle bit. I then created these grooves going straight down the middle. This is where sort of the hinge sits. So it's just a shape which is beveled, mirrored and subtracted away from what's already there. I then wanted to create this little panel to sit in, sat in the middle, sitted, sitted, that's not a word, sat in the middle. Um, so it's just a, again, blur histogram with some bolts, the same bolts node I spoke about earlier. 
levels to keep it in the right range as it needed to be and blend it on top I quite like the fact it sort of dips in then back out again um, like an indent around it I like that that was intended um, I know that it, it can look a bit odd um, but I, I just quite like the way that looks for this top bit this was a bit of a pain um, really because it was easy to create this first bit which is this rounded so I just took a shape with the rounded edge and the bevel curve and I've got the pipe shape I want to but to get this drop off this really nice rounded drop off I tried a few different ways um, eventually I settled on using a grade a change gradient which subtracts from this so it multiplies not subtracts and it gave me the shape I wanted and that was blended on top of uh, what was already there uh, to create this bottom, bottom piece is pretty similar to the previous step I uh, used the, the gradient transformed and moved it around and it's just blended on top of a square, so it's a gradient onto a gradient really, um, either side, subtracted the middle shape away. Um, it's nothing really revolutionary here, it's just like lots of subtracts and transform nodes everywhere, and a blur at the end just to soften it all out. Um, so the next bit, we got the latch, uh, so the bottom piece. Same again, gradient, cur the gradient curve and the histogram and blur are probably the two things that's used in nearly every single bit of this graph. Um, so it's the curve, which is masked out to only be on this pipe, transformed, positioned and mirrored. It's blended on top of a little pipe piece, so we get this nice little like hinge, which lines up with um, where the hinges sit on the latch. Also put some grooves in, using the previous technique of just beveling a, a very thin shape. And that's the latch, and even though like, okay, that's like a really quick process through that bit, this was probably one of the really fun bits to make. Um, and it came out exactly, pretty much, like, there's a few bits I'm not 100% on, like these, this bottom bit, but overall, and the way it reads on the overall shape, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, it's one of them, I think it's just a personal thing, it's just, came out exactly how I want. So the corner padding bits, this is one of the bits which I had the most trouble with but also I think adds the most to the material. Um, I need to add a sort of footnote that I owe a guy called TJ uh, a lot of praise, he really helped me with this and um, helped me get this cloth bit um, a lot better. Uh, I'll link his R station in the description, super talented guy uh, and very very smart because he really helped me out with this one. Um, so what we have is we have uh, so we had to create this first was the general shape of the whole thing, um, so that's done via creating a rounded shape, um, the round sort of following the, the curve of all the inner bevels and all that sort of stuff. Uh, create a copy and duplicate and duplicate and subtract away from the original, and then the corner bit where the latches will sit, they were also subtracted away. And then we had to use I used uh, shapes to sort of cut away the top and bottom so that it isn't a nice flat edge and it's sort of just slot into place. So this edge will meet up with the um, that top pill light bit I was doing and this edge will meet up with the mechanical piece I was, I was making previously so it all fits together like a little jigsaw. The, uh, the latch will sit in here and the whole hatch will sit in there. So it all sort of, will come, this is what I mean, I was, I, I, I piece together like a jigsaw like work out where it's going to go work on them individually and then they should just slot into place if I planned it right which at first I didn't actually do so took a bit of fixing we got there in the end um, added a bevel used a curve node and blurred it and then I've got this rim piece so that's a simple bit done from this I also gave a really soft pillowy um, bevel uh, and it turns out when you blur when you directionally warp, sorry, two pearly noises, you start getting that fabric look. Um, and then I also add a directional warp with my bevel, just so it gives it a bit of directionality to what I already had. Um, blended it on top of the bevel, so have the fall off I wanted. And you start getting the, start, the beginnings of the fabric look that we want. I did the same again, but with different, um, slightly different values, different seed blended it again and it just is a slightly bigger scale as well so we get sort of tighter creases rather than these big broad creases 
So this is the bit which I got a lot of help off uh, TJ for. Um, in terms of getting the wrinkles, directionality on these corn bits to give them tension creases. So this isn't my idea. This is what TJ showed me, and it was a, it's a genius. Um, really worth a treat. So I took the normal map, plugged into RGB split, um, basically removed the blue channel, and then uh, inverted the red and green, and it spits out something like this. When I plug that into a the vector map input and mask out using my this mask, masking it out and plugging it into a tile sampler with some um, what is it, some squished power boys with some random rotation, they all start. You see here, they all point generally in the right direction. So that's how we still got the basis there. That's like again, I owe TJ a lot for that one because it's a really good tip, and uh, I'll be using it a lot going forward. Um, I also gave some non-directional warp with a purling noise just to so they're not completely razor sharp straight and I gave them a slight blur so they're softened out and I subtracted from what was already there um, I also blended in some fractal summit it's super 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 subtle um, but it just gives them a tiny bit of texture like it, you can barely notice it just helps pick up some details um, also I want to add some noise on top of it again it looks really strong here but when it's blended in in the height map at the end and um, the noise isn't so strong from this texture so all that is just a grid um, rotated inverted and subtracted um, wrote, worked really really well I'm really happy with how that bit came out as well um, and it's all high blended into the rim piece all together and then mirrored it Mirrored it again, and I went into my height map. That's the ambient occlusion. That's the normal. Uh, really, really, really simple. Uh, so the final bit of this whole thing, I've quickly come out here, um, is basically at that point I thought I was done with this material. Um, and when I was looking at it and I was putting it together, it just felt wrong and needed sealing off on the edges so that it tile nicely. Even though again, it doesn't really matter that it tiles. It's not. It's not a production piece but it just wanted to sort of finish it off so I had this sort of steel frame uh, with some bolts and a little bit of text um, just to sort of tie it all together and finish off the material you can imagine you can still see just from there it's just transform nodes and shapes um, with bevels so this bit is nothing crazy um, nothing that we've lots of done before previously um, the only bit that's different is I'm using the text tool to Subtract into it, so it's engraved in caution symbols. So that bit isn't anything special. Um, you can you can see how that's done. It's nothing. It's just lots of transform nodes and shapes. Um, so now we'll go through uh, all of them at once. The creating the colours and the roughness. Yeah, super quick and super simple because it's such a clean sci-fi material. Um, I didn't spend a ton of time on these bits. So. I'm not going to go through the how I create the albedo and roughness for these bits simply because you can see that's the albedo there is very little going on there there's very little information to be gained from there it's just colors blocked on it's like ambient occlusion and curvature passes thrown onto the colors and um, the PBR guys will probably kill me for that um, but yeah the base color and the roughness are super you know the basic and uh, same for metallic there's nothing crazy going on so what I'm going to show now is just how I piece all the piece, all, all of the elements together. So each out, so we have outputs from them graphs. I always create a base, color, normal, roughness, metallic, height. Uh, I don't do AO because I generate my AO from my height map, and I've got a mask. Uh, everyone comes with a mask because it makes everything a lot easier blending it together. Uh, so you can see it's a bit like a bit messy because each clump of these is. Um, each element with the trans so for example the mirrors and the transforms I've had to do transforms on this end just blend just to position it just right around the hatch so that's why every single one then needs a transform in a mirror which is a bit tedious and not ideal but uh, I do think it's worthwhile um, so I'll show you through the height map so this is the height map we start with the border I start with the border because everything's sort of laid on top of that um, You've got the side bits, which get mirrored and then um, mirrored again. 
so you can see here where is it so that's how they end up looking mirrored like that they're high blended on top of the main hatch so you can see how you, you start to see how this will come together the top bits then added on top the corners then dropped in as well and they're rotating and fitting so the latch um, comes from the hat the, the latch comes from the hatch it sounds like a book um, we had the border and then I this is the padding, uh, the padding element I believe yeah so that's then high blended through that and then you see how it all just pieces together so there's nothing clever going on here it's just a bit it's a bit messy um, but it's just like piecing all the pieces together and um, when I'm creating all this I always come back to this top graph and I'm tweaking these transforms so when I've finished a hatch I transform and position it the way I want it had to shrink it a couple of times to allow more room for these guys uh, when I was positioning the latches I would come out into this this top graph position and go back in and carry on working on them to make sure they all position the way we want them to um, the metallic and roughness same thing I'm taking the roughnesses and from all these maps and I'm just blending them into each other um, the roughness from these isn't anything special it's a re that's why I didn't really want to go into it showing how they're made because there's not really much to show it's not very interesting it's not like if I was creating something like rock or um, something a bit more information and noise in there I would because it's a clean uh, sci-fi space sort of hatch there's no need for lots of information and roughness I don't think uh, I may be wrong the only one worth looking at I suppose um, is I guess the text which I used to create on the the hatch so if I come to the hatch and I open a reference uh, so down here is all my albino stuff so uniform colour it's that's my noise here we are so it's just text rotate into place becomes a mask white text that's in on top it, it, it's not a, a particularly advanced it's probably not perfect either in all honesty however it is just a personal experiment and I, I've said before I've right at the top of this uh, video if I was doing this for production it, this is a completely ridiculous way of doing a hatch of this nature you could probably make this in an hour 3d modeling and a bit of zbrush um, and texturing there's no need for it to be a um, a substance material like this this is just me wanting to experiment I, I've been doing a lot of these architecture materials and I wanted the opportunity to uh, try to sort of this clean sci-fi um, look so that was the final height final AO and the final normal they're all generated from the height map the final metallic map final roughness map and lastly the final Color map. Um, I'll link uh, the the nodes which can be found online, and I use so the curve mapper, really useful node. I'll, li I'll link that on uh, in the description. Uh, TJ's art station, um, very knowledgeable artist who helped me a lot. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope this helps a little bit. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching.